NFL playoffs continue on NBC Sports with the second AFC divisional game. Starting at 12.30 Eastern time, host Bryant Gumbel reviews the playoffs on NFL 81. And then the Buffalo Bills, the wild card, the team that's been winning on the road, goes against the leading passer in the NFL, Kenny Anderson, and the Cincinnati Bengals at Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen are there. They will be tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern time on NBC Sports. A high-spinning kickoff taken by an up-back. Doug Bedoin moves ahead and gets it out across the 35-yard line to the 37. So Air Coriel will go on offense in good position to start with their first possession of the second half. Ken Poole made the tackle. And that's the first piece of action that Bedoin has really had for San Diego. You know he was just activated today. And formerly he was with the Dolphins. A lot of times a coach will take a man just for that reason. But let's just take a look at the intensity that's being displayed by Miami. Bedoin makes a good jump over the first man and back to the action. Chuck Muncie and the Chargers are stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Go to the run. There's nothing there. No gain. Might have gotten a yard. Make it second down and nine. It's we're early in the third quarter. 10-20 to play in it. John Sandusky, one of the assistants, talking of Don Strzok. What a game he's had. Don Strzok coming off the bench to relieve David Woodley. He's just having a lot of fun. Here is Dan Fouts throwing over the middle, and he's got Kevin Winslow in open field. And Winslow is down the far sideline and finally knocked out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. So the Chargers strike with the big play they need so badly. What? And we mentioned Mike Kozlowski will be man-to-man -man on Kellen Winslow through most of the day. On this particular occasion, he was not. He gets by the linebacker. Then Mike uh, Kozlowski tries to pick him up after he eludes Blackwood. This man makes a lot of big plays for San Diego, and he mentions that three-yarder that he made against uh, Tampa Bay in a real in a 24 to 23 Donnie Brook is his biggest play of the season loves to be in the position he's in it now John you may vividly remember the best comeback prior to this in 57 when the Lions came back against the 49ers with 20 points down yeah I watched it <laughs> <laughs> penalty markers down the Miami secondary he may get defensive a holding call you know Fouts was looking at an intended receiver saw him either held up or slipped. Oh, it's going to go the other way. Well, my, my, my. Offensive pass interference. Right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. From Nashville, WSMV. The Chargers set back by the penalty against them as referee Fred Wyan checked it out with the Miami field captain. First and 10 play originating at the Miami 31 yard line. Now the step off. You know what you see very little of in this game? Players sitting on the bench. Interference, number 80. Boy, that is for sure. They're all up and along the sidelines. When they first showed up on the field after we heard the Orange Bowl last night, they had a laugh because it looked like there was only a third of a football team out there. Clemson and Nebraska each dressing about 115 guys. They had a league. First down at 20. San Diego game is tied. Beautiful breakup by Miami. Dwight Scales turning over the middle. Don McNeil in the Miami lineup. Broken arm and all. Knocked the ball down. Hey, you don't have to catch it. He's a very good man-to-man -man cover. They feel he's probably the best cover on the Miami defense. He's asking in. He wants a part of this. Bill Arnsbarger said he worked very well during the week. He's a little doubtful as a tackler, but he can, as you mentioned, John, is the best cover they had, and he can run around and knock things down back there as an extra DB. 9.38 to go, third quarter. Second down and 20. Penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. They were looking at Chuck Muncie. He's thrown very quick. Fouts trying to go to Chuck Muncie. Here's the call again as the marker was down at the line of scrimmage. It is against San Diego. 
So the Chargers are firing, but they're falling back with the penalties. I think that look tells it all right there. He's a, he's a bit dejected. And with reason. Third down. They came out of the block so fast, you often hear coaches talk about getting a big lead real early sometimes takes away initiative from a team. They think they have it won. I don't think that was the case in San Diego's uh, situation. Uh, they kept throwing the ball. They kept trying to move it offensively. But they've gone from the penthouse to, uh, the to a harness nest. Pouch has a problem, gets it away. Kellen Winslow has the ball, and look at that tackle. Ernest Roan, number 55. The only guy in the league from Henderson State in Arkansas. He's getting a lot better pressure on him right now. Bo Camper coming from the outside, forces Dan to step up. Now he's got no way to go to go long. Makes a decision to go to Winslow underneath. Not the intended receiver. Good play by the D's. Just a simple little check delay. He's his safety valve. If nothing else is open, he'll come to him. That's the way the defense played it. Ernest Roan puts his shoulder on the pads and down goes Kellen Winslow and San Diego has to punt. 8.43 to play third quarter. The game is tied, 24 all. That'd be a delay of game, it is. That's all right, they were just trying to get him to jump. If they happen to jump, fine, they pick up five. They don't, doesn't matter on the punt. Yeah, if they picked up that five, they'd gone to the field goal probably. Well, I was looking at that, and, uh, and with the wind, rem remember we saw Bernishka kick one about uh, as a matter of fact, it was quite a bit longer than that. Yeah. And almost make it. <clears throat> but at this point, the Chargers have come a cropper. There's the defensive coordinator, Jack Pardee, who was twice NFL coach of the year, head coach of the Bears, then at Washington. The defensive system hasn't taken hold just yet. It's starting to late in the season. That's right, it was. And they were playing good defense. <laughs> George Roberts, the ex-Dolphin out there to punt. Hits the ball very high into the lights. Vigorito watches it sail out of the end zone for a touchback. And the Dolphins, who were down 24 to nothing and have proceeded to score 24 points to tie the game, send their offense back out. When we come back, it'll be first and 10 Miami at the Dolphins' 20-yard line. What a game. Get the twin action Norelco Rototract rechargeable razor. Inside three floating heads, twin action grips and raises hair up, then razors hair off closer than ever without mix and cuts or soap and water. The twin action Norelco Rototract rechargeable because for close shaves, there's no action like twin action. <laughs> tell me, one tour in the United States and you defect it? That's right, comrade. In People's Republic, you are big star. Here, you are... Ah, I know. They give you country home in Babuchi, television set, washing machine. Da, even blue jeans. So why, Babuchi? Why? Because, comrade, they could not give me straws. A straw! Not a straw! Hey! A Goodyear blimp high over the Orange Bowl in Miami. Playoff football on NBC, and what a game it's been earlier today. Dallas got out in front of Tampa Bay, then continued to beat him into the ground. San Diego opened up a 24-0 lead in the first quarter in this game, but the Miami Dolphins, resilient, have come back to tie it. Now they go first and 10. Nathan cracks the San Diego defense for a six or seven yard game. And you almost get the feeling that Shula's now in a position where he can do what he wanted to be able to do at the outset of the ball game. He's sitting there, the score is zero to zero for all intents and purposes. He's got San Diego a little concerned. When you get a team concerned, you can do an awful lot of things that you couldn't do prior. He would love to run the ball from sideline to sideline, see if he can't wear down this San Diego defense. There's another part to that. Strock's been so hot, do you stop what you've been doing? I think you keep him throwing, keep that right arm cranking because Strock is having a great game. We'll see if there was motion in the Miami line that brought that. As Andre Franklin runs on second down and three. Markers down. 
stopping the clock with 7.44 to go. We mentioned tomorrow it is Buffalo at Cincinnati in the other AFC divisional playoff game. Pre-game show NFL 81 at 12.30 here on NBC. The winner of that game, if it's Cincinnati, would be on the home field against either of these teams, whichever team wins here today. If Buffalo should win at Cincinnati, then the Bills would be on the road against the winner of today's game. Wild card can't have a home game in the playoffs. Offense was not set for a second. You heard it. That's one of the few times in the last quarter and a half that Miami has made a mistake of any kind. This game turned exactly when Don Strock walked on the field. He really did. Miami now has 245 yards passing. Just 26 rushing, but they haven't bothered to run the ball. They had to throw it to get back in the game and get back in it. They did. Here comes Nathan. Cody Nathan on second down and eight takes it out to the 28 yard line. It'll bring up third down and short yardage. Woodrow low 51 on the stop for the Chargers. All right. You say well how can they run the ball effectively now. They couldn't do it earlier in the ball game. They've thrown it so well that you get the linebackers off the line of scrimmage playing it very loose when you play it a little loose. You're in a position of not containing the wide sweep. They've, they're taking one guard pulling him getting good getting good. Uh, movement off the ball and it, it's nothing but a piece of cake for a back to pick up seven or eight yards. And another big factor John as we discussed earlier is the way that Miami maintained its equilibrium and got back into the game gradually didn't try to go wild get it all on 80 He's yards. Got it. And is open but Nat Moore cannot quite get to the ball. He'd left cornerback Mike Williams two steps behind on the fly pattern. Mike made a very good recovery because it looked like it looked as if Nat Moore was going to come wide open. He picked up a couple of yards on him made Strzok try to make a great throw rather than an easy one. I think it was worth the gamble. Here we go. Nat Moore. You can see he gets by at the line of screen. Looks like he's going to the corner but you can see he's not running at full speed because he isn't as well as he'd like to be. As a result Mike Williams comes by and makes a fine play. And Strzok. As he illustrates there, Shirley has the long distance arm, but now Miami has to punt. The Chargers could get good field position. A well hit ball, though, by Morris. Here's James Brooks to the 39 yard line, and Miami, always proud of its special teams play and smarting today from a touchdown return and a punt earlier by Wes Chandler, comes up to cover nicely. So at 6.39, left to play third quarter, the Chargers go on offense in this tie game. This Bud's for that first day on the job. This Bud's for you, for all you can do. This king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you can do. This Bud's for you. Now there's a place where they have their own authorized mechanics, quality parts and service, and prices you can afford. Now there's K-Care, found only at Kmart. Will your battery make it through the winter? Come in for a complimentary charging system check. If your battery needs replacing, we can install our 560 maintenance-free five-year battery. It's powerful and sale priced at just $54.88. Our best maintenance-free battery. It never needs water. That's K-Care, only at Kmart. They shot down the Jets, and they're now hunting for Bengals. Tomorrow, Joe Ferguson leads the tough Buffalo Bills against the unstoppable Cincinnati Bengals. Great AFC Divisional Playoffs. Your sports ticket tomorrow on NBC. Don Cricky with John Brody back at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Some most unlikely turns to this game. It's all locked up 24 all right now. Chargers first and ten in their spot setting up quickly going over the middle and there is another reception by Kellen Winslow. It, Don that man has such a pair of hands that in a crowd a guy that can take a ball that's coming that fast and not have to let it go to his shoulder pads but can put his arm, hands right up snatch it out of the air. Take a look. This is the offensive line. They know it's their job to do Masick White Wilkerson Washington. They've got to do it right now. And they got some buildings in that offensive line of San Diego. Washington at 290, Shields at 280, White at 280. Here's a throw, and 
John Capaletti cannot hold on to the ball coming out of the backfield on a first down play. That was such a good play by Fouts. Wanted to go down the field, convinced everybody in the house, including me, then just kind of came off with a little shuffle job over to Capaletti. And he caught it. He was on the dead run in the clear. Pretty good offensive offensive pass protection, giving Dan a chance to let the linebackers clear out, coming underneath to Capaletti. All for naught. Dan Herner put the big rush on there, John. Let's take a look. You know, offensively, these guys who have been the core of their football team have to do a job. That's Bob Baumhauer, a pro bowler. Ed White, a veteran of 13 years. This is what it's about. Great play, but the ball is lost. Muncy coming out of the backfield. Had it right on his numbers, but it caromed off his pads and almost was intercepted by Miami. They're coming to the backs underneath because the linebackers are taking very deep drops trying to help out on the three wide receivers. He takes advantage of it by coming to Muncie. He doesn't drop many balls, but he dropped a big one at a critical time. Not too many times do you get a critical drop with 552 in the third quarter, but you get the feeling they got, they've got to do something. Well, they'll be trying now with a throw on third down, third down and 10 for San Diego at the Miami 48 yard line. West Chandler is wide left. There's a catch and there's a first down for San Diego. Dwight Scales in his fifth year from Grambling turns in, catches the ball 17 yards downfield for a Charger first down. Miami trying to make a big play. Tr attempts to put the pressure on Fouts. It's a blitz all the way. You see no linebackers in the in intermediate zone. A, a cornerback is really at the mercy of a wide receiver. And when Chandler catches the ball, defensive back has fallen down. Offensive line picked up the people. 17 yard gain and a first down. They say you're going to try to knock those Chargers off their patterns and throw the rhythm up. They haven't been doing it on this drive now as Fouts has his team first and 10. A quick out goes to West Chandler. And Chandler looking to break the crust and take it the distance, takes it down to the 25 yard line. You notice that. Dan has gone to all of his receivers about equal amounts. However, not on any given day. He'll go with the guy that's hot. You find, and generally it's because of a defensive coverage that allows that. But in this case, a little short, a short job to West Chandler. You're giving a, a guy that can do as much as he can do with the ball a chance to make a big play for you and keep, keep your drive alive. After John Jefferson left the Chargers and the contract impasse, West Chandler came in from New Orleans. He was expensive, a first round and a third round draft choice. But it put that whole passing game of San Diego's back together again. Bounce, pump fakes, throws, touchdown, Kellen Winslow. And the Chargers take back the lead 30 to 24. Tell you, Winslow would almost pull to Duriel Harris. I don't think he saw it. He was very excited. He ran right into the goal post, almost knocked himself out. That goal post will knock you out. What a beautiful move. Look at the pump by Fouts. Uh, waits for Winslow to cut underneath in the zone coverage. Puts it right where it has to be thrown. Winslow comes up with another big play. As he dunks it, he came down on the goal post. See, that's beautiful pattern. Boy, it was. His ninth catch of the day for 25 yards and a touchdown. Kellen Winslow at nine receptions for 117 yards. Extra point is up and good. And the San Diego Chargers, whose offense has been quiet for a while, strike on the big play, and they take back the lead. It is a 31-24 game, San Diego in the lead, and the Chargers will be kicking off when we come back to Miami, Florida. We found out the hard way. If you stand still in the car business, you get run over. So ever since, Chrysler has been moving ahead. For 1982, we're the only company introducing a full line of cars that combine front-wheel drive, high mileage, and luxury. Our Chrysler LeBaron series, nobody has anything like them. Not Ford, not GM, not the imports. I challenge you to compare their quality and technology to anything that comes out of Germany or Japan. There's this sporty coupe that's priced so that you won't go into sticker shock. And a four-door sedan that offers impressive gas mileage and six-passenger room. This handsome town and country, this dazzling convertible that puts a little fun back into driving. No cars are perfect, but these come pretty close. Drive them. See for yourself how quiet and smooth they are. If you don't agree they're the best Chrysler's ever made, the very best America has to offer at a sensible price, then I'm in the wrong business. Oh, one more thing. If you can find a better car, buy it. 
The Chargers go 60 yards in six plays, the final 25 in this throw. Real good pass protection. Winslow beats the zone. When you run patterns the way he does, move the way he does, you're going to make a lot of touchdowns, but don't do that once you get in there. You're, someday they're going to learn their lesson. He almost did, John. He came down that, pulled that right leg a little bit. He's all right. Vigorito on a good kickoff. Good coverage by Bob Greger. All right. Should be able to see it again one more time. Good pump by Fouts. Opens the zone a little. Throw it at the right time. You'll find a hole. He does. What did Paul Brown tell Bob Trumpy? When you go in the end zone, act like you've been there before. He's been there so much, he probably got bored. Had to make it a little more exciting. That was the Trumpers' first touchdown in the preseason game. He was quite excited, threw his helmet in the air. Coach Brown says, Trumpy, if you score another one in this league, act like you've been there. He got there again for him, though. And now we see a dump-off pass going to Tony Nathan. First down, he's across the 20-yard line out to the 24. And there's a penalty marker down. Chargers say it's against Miami. It's better to hear what Fred Wyant says. Holding against the Dolphins with 3.59 to go in the third quarter, and the Chargers in the lead, 31 to 24. They led by seven, you'll remember, at halftime, 24-17. Then the Dolphins completed that amazing comeback when they were down 24 to nothing in the first quarter. They tied the game here in the third quarter, 24 all. The least penalized team in the league has uh, had some very untimely ones in the last have, in the last right. quarter or so. But you know what this what the drive that the offense of San Diego put together did is it gave the defense a, a chance to regroup. And boy, you really need it when a when a team's coming at you the way Miami's been coming at after, after, after San Diego. This has been some game, and we've got a long way to go. Here's a swing pass goes out to Tony Nathan, turns up the middle, crosses the 15. And Tony Nathan gets back to about the 18-yard line in a first and 15 play. Laslovic got him. The pursuit by San Diego's defense excellent to stop a big gainer. Well, early in the ball game, we saw the San Diego defensive linemen having the best of everything. Right now, they're in a, in a run pass situation. They can't get in their starting blocks. We saw Big Hands Johnson make good pursuit, miss the tackle. But they're still they're still very active, and that was a concern. Don Sprock and the offense of Miami now faced with second down and nine as the Chargers bring their linebackers up tight. Swing pass again to Nathan, and again, whoops, he gets away. Tony Nathan's not done, and he gets out across the 25, out to the 26. He's less than a yard from a first down when it seemed he would be knocked down just beyond the line of scrimmage. Yes, sir. It looked like it might have been a face mask, but I guess he got a straight shot right in the mouth. He missed the whole thing. Boy, this is some kind of play. He's caught six now for 59 yards. Well, he jumps underneath Woodrow low. It looks like three tacklers have him. Leroy Jones lets him go. Finally, the whole team gets him down. It should be a little bit short of the first down, but it's within six inches. The sticks come out. They can tell a sad story sometimes, this time inches away. They have another down, though. Take a look at the way he gets popped when he does get popped. He finally, he finally comes loose out of the pile. Louis Kelcher misses. Leroy Jones misses. Pete Shaw gets the top of his hat. Gets the top of his hat. No face mask, anyway. Miami looking good on January 2. Temperature in the 70s. And the Orange Bowl is jammed. As we mentioned earlier in the game, under Don Shula, when the Orange Bowl's been sold out during his reign as coach of the Dolphins. The Dolphins have won 20 and lost two. Right now, they're down by a touchdown and an extra point, 31-24. Third and inches. Oh. Looks like the sticks are coming out again. I don't think they're coming out. They didn't get back to the line of scrimmage, Don. Great penetration interior-wise by Kelcher. Yes, sir. And big hands. They were down low. 
They beat the guards at the point of attack. Woodrow Lowe, the sticker from Alabama, came up on the outside. But Louis Kelcher created the, created the, the whole deal. If they get it, it's going to be by the nose of the football. If they get it, they gave him a good spot. They didn't get it. That's what you call no game. They got it. What? They got it. The yard markers move on, and the Dolphins get four new downs. Those numbers. Huh. Not a balanced offense. You'd expect that from San Diego. Of course, you wouldn't expect the Miami to be down 24 zip either. I don't know if anyone expected this many points in a playoff game. Good defense. There is a swing out the flat. Whoa. Two charges ran into each other. Mike Williams and Pete Shaw collided. <laughs> Well, Pete Shaw never saw the ball. His back was turned the whole way, and Mike Williams never saw Pete Shaw. Had Pete not been in the way, Mike picked it off and run in. Look at this. The only guy that didn't have a chance for the ball was Cephalo. The other two had perfect shot set. We had a collision, so it goes incomplete. Second down and 10 comes up. 2.20 to go in the third quarter. 31-24 San Diego. perfectly thrown or Buchanan may have picked it off he beat it he beat a double zone coverage Buchanan's the up man Shaw coming over when you throw it that well into a double zone there's no chance oops he cuts right underneath and it's the only way he could go when he cut underneath the ball was actually already thrown and it was thrown right where it had to be as Cephalo looks back and there it is 23-yard gain. Here's a man open. Bruce Hardy to the pick. The official numbers, John, 21 of 27 for 312 yards and four touchdowns. That last stat is impressive. 50 yards to tight end Bruce Hardy. Von Schaumann is through the uprights with his extra point, and we are all tied up at 31 all with 1.28 to go in the third quarter. Who's to say where this one goes? We might be going for bonus. Go for 100 points. Guy that gets the ball last, big fella. Last at bat. We'll be back to the Orange Bowl after this. Right now, you can rent any size gasoline-powered truck and rider's fleet for one low daily rate, plus a variable mileage charge. What a nice little truck. That's the daily rate. How about a little bigger? Same rate. You want one way out to here? Still the same. When rider rents trucks at this price, we almost hate to let them go. Ryder, $29.95 a day for the best truck money can rent. Why do 100,000-mile flyers choose United? I travel the world helping people who think big is bad. But when it comes to the planes I travel on, the bigger the better. And because United's the biggest airline in the land, they're plenty big enough to have more of these roomy wide bodies than anyone else. So if you like wide bodies as much as I do, call United first. 
you'll be in great shape. People who fly for a living fly United's friendly skies. Don Strack with numbers good for a Hall of Fame day. He came to Miami in 73 out of Virginia Tech as a fifth round draft choice. Has been a backup quarterback his whole time here. There's the man he hit Bruce Hardy the tight end. Backed up Greasy. Backs up Whitley but he's getting a lot more playing time as a relief pitcher and today he's had his greatest game and we're tied at 31. James Brooks turns outside. And a fine special team play. Ronnie Lee a tight end covering on special teams and the Chargers start off in their own end. The 17 yard line. So here we go again. Amazing. 62 points on the board already and they're even up 31 all. to Kellen Winslow all day long but it doesn't change the rest of the coverage they're trying to stop him they're doing everything they can to contain him it's just the play of a great tight end number 80 it's made it almost impossible well as the Miami defensive coordinator and assistant head coach Bill Arnsbarger said before the game you don't stop San Diego you hope you can slow him down so they don't win the game they're going to get yards and they're going to get points they have today Bounce takes a look on second and ten gets it away Don McNeil, broken arm and all, is right there covering and bats the ball away. He fractured his right arm against Kansas City in the second last game of the season. Didn't play against Buffalo in the finale. It's a good thing for Dan that his, that his arm was broken because he threw that ball away in desperation, not wanting to take a great big loss. And a, a, Mc, a McNeil with two good arms might have brought that one down for an interception. I think he would. It's pretty tough to catch it when you're with those arms bundled up like a lineman's. But he can still cover and he can still knock him down. Third and ten. Too high. Intercepted. Blackwood has the ball. Lyle Blackwood. Another lateral. Gerald Small takes the lateral and goes inside the 15 yard line. This incredible game. We're, Rick, we're taking a look at the zone defense. Now they've got pretty good penetration. They're rushing five people, but they're still playing a three deep zone down there. He was intending to go to Joyner. No play. Actually, Joyner was very well covered. Blackwood makes a great play, intercepting, then laterals to Small. He makes a fine reception or return, and they're down to the 15. That ball got away from Dan. One of the few that has gotten away from him all day, but a big turnover. Well, as you were pointing out, John, his previous throw was an errant one, almost intercepted, and this one was right to the Miami defense. Now the Dolphins go to the run. That's Lyle Blackwood. He's moved around the league a little bit. Was at Baltimore for most of his career. Spent some time with the New York Giants. Came in here as a free agent. Won the starting safety job right alongside his brother Glenn. And he was in perfect position as those Miami defenders so often are. There are the numbers for the two QBs. That would be all right for two games, but three quarters is uh, rather outstanding. Most impressive as much as the touchdowns that Strzok has put the ball up that often in desperation when they had to come back and he's not been intercepted. The third quarter is winding down and winding out. So after three quarters of play the game is tied 31 31 but when we come back the Dolphins will be challenging to go ahead. 
Sunday, Bruce Weitz of Hill Street Blues explores a world of danger on Catalina Sea Lab. Then Ponch takes what may be the last ride of his life on an all-new Chips. And Gregory Peck, Lawrence Olivier, the boys from Brazil. A shocking movie thriller. Right after an all-new Chips and Catalina Sea Lab Sunday on NBC. Hello, I'm John Mayo, Mayo Tire. We're continually searching the world for the best tire buys from anywhere. If you own a compact like a Japanese import, we have found this British 13-inch steel belted radial, and you can save up to 53%. Still our best buy for American cars is the world-famous Michelin steel radial, which we're now offering for as low as $64. That's 40% off Michelin's suggested price. Want to find the best tire value, no matter what the brand? Come to Mayo Tire, 15th and Church. In Raleigh, North Dakota, where winters are cold and costly, they're now warm and economical. Father Kenneth Wald heats six classrooms with Kerosun portable heaters. For 40 cents a day, these safety-tested kerosene heaters give him clean, odorless comfort. And for St. Gertrude's Parish, the savings were a miracle. Kerosun. Because you don't have money to burn. Kerosun heaters at Western Auto Store, Nashville, and K's Ace Hardware, Hermitage. We're WSMV, Nashville. Miami Dolphins were losing badly on the scoreboard, but they never lost their composure, John, and now they're set to go ahead. It's the first opportunity they've had, their defense set it up. But... Miami can take it in here or get the field goal. They'll be in front for the first time. Tony Nathan behind the end. Season. 
He had one with they figured was a fatal fumble against Buffalo late in the game. But then the Chargers came back to win the regular season finale, beating Oakland 23 to 10. Got a lot of help from the Chicago Bears, who I think, John, could call themselves champions of the AFC West. They're 4-0 <laughs> in that division this season. Yeah. Unfortunately for the Bears, they couldn't beat anybody else. Second and eight. Good throw. It's to Kellen Winslow. Who else? He's out to the 29-yard line. And I see a late flag come in. Yeah. And it's around the ball carrier. I look for the ball to go back up the field. That's a break. That's a break for San Diego. Dan's got Winslow out in motion. Comes back underneath the wide receiver cleaning out. You see Kozlowski trailing again, as he has been all afternoon, but he's been trailing close. Statistician Steve Dance points out that Kellen Winslow, John, has now tied John Stallworth for the most catches in an AFC man. playoff game. Number 58, Ten. push down. You know, another factor to contend with uh, is the crowd. This is a loud crowd. Now that they've got a seven-point lead, it has increased its velocity about 50%, and it just makes it that much more difficult for Fouts to, to call out to his wide receiver. First and ten. Fouts throws. Uh oh Yep. Here's another penalty marker. Folks on the Chargers sideline aren't happy about things at all. Chandler was whacked on the play. Well, Glenn, Glenn Blackwood is coming in. They're playing a double zone. Fouts is trying to beat it the way it struck did earlier. The ball is tipped. When it is, Blackwood is not playing the ball. He's playing the man. He thought he'd probably catch the ball. He wanted to see if he could jar him loose. At that time, you can't be looking around for the ball. You know you're behind. You're trying to catch up. It was a penalty, but it wasn't an intentional late hit. But it is a 15-yard mark-off. Personal foul. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 47. First down. Crazy numbers at the Orange Bowl. Wild numbers. Great game. Long way to go. 13-49 to play. Muncie running hard. And he's on the Miami side of the field now as he takes it all the way down to the 39-yard line. Chuck Muncie getting up ahead of steam and starting to roll. They say he's been a standout citizen in San Diego. We mentioned the key people are the offensive linemen for San Diego. If they can move the defense of Miami off the line of scrimmage, which they've done on several occasions to give Muncie some running room, real good offensive line blocking. Muncie picks up another first. Once he gets the first indeed, they said they traded him, John, at New Orleans because he was forgetful. He forgot to come to practice. He doesn't forget which way he's going. <laughs> he heading due east. There's a little dump off back to Muncy. And a good defensive play. Ernest Roan tackles him behind the line of scrimmage at the 42-yard line of Miami. This play was doomed from the start. It's a blitz. Fouts is trying to come to Muncie late. He expected his own coverage. When it's a blitz, the linebacker has man-to-man -man coverage on Muncie. Makes a good play. Gets by Don Masek, the center, who was trying to block on the screen. Holds it to a one- or two-yard loss. Here we go. We mentioned the blitz. A.J. Dewey, number 77, usually tips it off. He's coming along with four other down linemen. Second and long, deeper drop. Chandler turns in. Helen Winslow's taking the beating going out in his patterns now. They've got to try to slow the big guy up. I don't know who was picking who that time. They do run a lot of picks, too, like a basketball Well, you team. see Joyner. Now Winslow's going down the field. He's getting a lot of attention right now. You see number 40 with him again. I can't tell whether he was going to uh, Winslow or uh, Joyner. Well, it ended up not near either. Right. So now it's going to be third down and 13 for San Diego. 42-yard line of Miami. The Dolphins having rallied back from a 24 to nothing deficit in the first quarter. And they now lead the game 38 to 31.
Charlie Joyner lost it, and Miami was so close to an interception. Charlie felt he should have had it. The hands he's got, he doesn't drop many. No, and he doesn't drop many like that. The ball was a little high thrown. Big play. My goodness. Fantastic. George Rogers, this is a, if you're going to help your team as a punter or Roberts, kick it out of bounds inside the pin. I'm sure he'd like to do that. He'll see he's giving it a good shot. Oh, it just walks in. It almost got out inside the five. He'd love to do it here in Miami. That ex Dolphin. But the ball comes out to the 20 yard line with 11.58 left to play in the game. Time comes when you must watch your money carefully. So quality and value are a necessity. Can you find them in an American car? Absolutely. In Plymouth, built with advanced technology and front wheel drive for the best gasoline economy of any American car. Five passenger horizon miser and not a penny more than 81. The American way to get your money's worth. Get a car, get a check. 300 to 1,000 on other new Chryslers and Plymouths. Participating dealers are full details. We got them all. That means it's Miller time. Come on, I'm buying. Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. It's Barbara Mandrell, the Mandrell sisters, yeah. with the Oak Ridge Boys, Andy Williams, and a cowboy salute. It's just me. Saturday. We are back at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Don Quickie with John Brody on a warm January night. The Dolphins and the Chargers putting out an offensive display that has been most amazing as Miami leads the game 38 to 31 and has the ball first and 10 at their 20. Andre Franklin gets it out to maybe the 22. Dolphins would like to be able to move the chain markers and run the clock now. There's a good defense against the which fools the offense they expected his own defense and San Diego has played zone most of the first most of this whole ball game that time they were in a blitz defense you can't run an end sweep against the blitz they shut it down put him in a passing situation second and eight I guess we're all not uh, on top of everything Quite interesting a montage like of what's going on yes, sir not like this ball game though it here is the handoff to Nathan, and he weaves his way, and the San Diego defenders are there to knock him down again for virtually no gain for Miami. It's San Diego fighting to get back the ball. San Diego knows its backs are up against the wall. Their defensive line has got to do the play right now. Las Lavic overruns it a little bit, but gets, gets Nathan stopped. When he does, Johnson picks it up. And now the Dolphins come to third down and seven. Rock's been very, very effective on third downs, completing six of eight for first downs. He's thrown for two touchdowns on third down. The Uber bet is going up top now. Didn't get it. No, he did not. Fine play by Pete Shaw, the Chargers. Strong safety delivers oh. the hit. Depends which foot he puts it on. Holy man, I think he might have it where they have the ball. Well, take a quick look. Now, they're going to give him as much forward progress as he made. His foot actually came down on the other side of the line. It looks like an accurate call to me. I mean, wherever it's spotted, it's within a foot of a first down if it's not. He had to get it to the 30. Well, if he's touching the 30, it's going to be the nose of the ball again. he does again. get a first down. Got another one. They get the first down. Look at that. Unless the markers are off, he had to get it once he touched the 30. Another well-thrown ball by Don. It was. It has been a game full of well-thrown balls by Strzok. Clock running, 10-15 to play. 
Dolphins get four new downs and send Cephalo wide to the left and Duriel Harris on the right flank. Quick out to Harris and he's across the 35 to the 36. Dolphins get six yards in that first down play. Lyndon King and Willie Buchanan are on the tackle. They gave him that blitz again, Don, when they did so. This is a perfect play to call against it. Cornerback has to back off when he does. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. The pursuit's going to be a little bit late. Second and four, they like it. How's that one? Astounding. Off the bench to do it. The game clock winds down to 9-12 to play, and the Dolphins keep the ball moving, and the chain markers, too. Low and Shaw on the stop. Tony Nathan playing with a knee injury that's kept him out in recent games. The offensive line is just having a ball right now. Give us a chance. John Geister leads, makes a good block. Nathan, Nathan doesn't need much of a crack. Made some big plays. You recall his earlier run in this quarter, 12 yards into the end zone for the go-ahead touchdown. Miami's first lead of the day. On first down, right back to the run, right up the middle. Andre Franklin, the 228-pound fullback from Nebraska. I, I would think that this man would probably have to consider what do we have to do. Okay, 24 to nothing lead. They get come back and tie it. You take him down in another drive, put it out at 31-24. And now you're seven back. Yep. One thing about Andre Franklin, Jam, when he's in there, you know he's going to run it or block. He doesn't catch it. He's got three receptions for the year. <laughs> but he did set a Miami rookie rushing record with over 700 yards. Eddie Hill comes in, and the swing pass is a little out of his reach. That ball was floating perilously on the right flank there. Well, it was a safe ball. You know, people say, hey, when you throw in those flats, it's always very dangerous. That was a play where he had nothing but room to throw the ball in. He led Hill very quick. He caught him on the dead running to pick up four or five yards, but there was no danger. Now, again, the Dolphins and Don Strock come to a third down play, third down and eight from the 42-yard line. 7.56 to go in the game. Block is stopped on the incomplete pass. 38-31 Miami. Pick up the blitz. Hardy works his way ahead, and the Dolphins do it again. They get the first down. Time and again, the Dolphins respond with a big play. Well, they struck. Struck made a nice throw, allowing Hardy to make his move, stop, then turn back, throwing it right in between two linebackers. And Hardy made an excellent play once he did get to the line. Looked like he lost the ball, got a good bounce, and recovered it again. You remember Bruce Hardy's last reception prior to this one went for 50 yards and a touchdown to tie the game. Strzok has now thrown 31 times, completed 26 for 334 yards and four touchdowns. down to 7.33 to play. If the Dolphins complete this game with a victory, it will go into the books as the greatest comeback victory in NFL playoff history. Detroit was down 20 to nothing to San Francisco way back in 1957. When John Brody was an apple cheek, again, right? an apple cheek <laughs> young quarterback. <laughs> Miami is down 24 to nothing in this game. Tony Nathan, bruised on the previous play, comes back in to carry the ball to the 48. Miami huddling at their leisure now. Put a little well, age on Coach Shula this Well, point. it is time to look at the clock. You've got a seven-point lead. What you would really love is to main, maintain ball control. I know this ball game's going topsy-turvy. 69 points scored, but right now, this is what they hoped they could do when they started the ball game. It's the first time they've really been able to do it.
second and eight. Quick out. Look at these sure-handed tight ends. Another first down. Bruce Hardy turns out. Here's a very safe pass, very well thrown. A little crossing pattern. Matt Moore to the inside. Hardy to the outside. Let Pete Shaw make the coverage. Well thrown. Picks up another first down. They're on the move again. Every time that Don Strzok has come on to relieve David Woodley, John, of course, Woodley has started the next game. What do you do next week if Miami wins and they go to the AFC Championship game? I would imagine that uh, that's Shula's decision. That's for surely his decision. Here is Tony Nathan turning outside. He's knocked down about a yard loss on the play. I would imagine that uh, he has a viewpoint about that, but he's not too concerned about it right now. When you're playing as well as Strzok is playing today, he can change a man's whole career around, okay? You come off having not thought to be a, a, a real top starter, you come off the bench. He's played like a starter today, okay? Because when he got started, it was early in the second quarter. The whole three quarters of play, he had to go through the halftime and all the rigmarole. So he's played like a starter, and he's played beautifully. And it could change a, whole, a man's whole career and change people's viewpoint of him. Kind of a pleasant dilemma if Mommy does win for Coach Shula. Which one he goes with? They won 11 games with the young guy starting at quarterback. Here's a swing pass going out. Bruce Hardy getting free again and goes down the sidelines. It's another Miami first down. Mike Williams knocks him out of bounds. I don't think you'll see him throw the ball anymore. He might, but I don't think you'll see it. They're now well within field goal range. They're moving the ball down the field. They can eat up another minute or so on the clock. It's already at 534. San Diego's dragon. The San Diego defense has been on the field a long time, and they are dragging. Does Coach Coriel? I'd be numb. I believe Coach is. First and ten, Miami. They go to Nathan. Behind Newman, Tony Nathan turns up field and takes it down to the 21-yard line. Laslovic tackles him, and Nathan keeps it inbounds, and the game clock goes down to 5.20 to play and tick it. No fooling around now. Give the ball to Tony. Let Andrew Franklin take it for a couple yards. Eat up another 45 to 50 seconds on the clock. Second down and eight yards to go, but the, the, but the play took 45 to 50 seconds before they'll have to start it in motion again. Miami, which couldn't get doing anything at the outset, has 23 first downs now. Second and eight. Back to the sure thing, right up the middle. Andre Franklin gets ahead. San Diego says, oh we've got the ball, and they do. The Chargers get a fumble recovery, and with 4.39 left to play, San Diego trailing by seven, goes on offense. Everything's happened. But this is the one thing they just knew couldn't happen. Andre Franklin fumbles at a most critical time where they can darn near run the clock out. Now San Diego's got a chance to get back in. Tonight, the Martins... Consecutive evenings at the famed Orange Bowl, one of the famous football arenas in America. NBC has been pleased to bring you two great games. The 1982 Orange Bowl last night as Clemson wins the national championship. And now this spectacular playoff game. Fouts gets up, eludes the rush, gets it away, and Charlie Joyner comes back and catches the ball. And he is out to the 33-yard line. He has a first down. The fumble recovery could be a very big one. I'll tell you what else could be a big one. Kellen Winslow came back to try and help out Charlie Joyner on the run. He hit uh, Glenn Blackwood, and he took himself out of the ball game. He might have broken his arm. Woo. See if we pick All right, that let's up take again. Dan, Dan was able to get up, had good enough pass protection. His offensive line's holding him out very well. He hits Joyner. Now watch. Okay, there Winslow comes back. He's not in the lineup. Chandler. Well, you got to get him and throw a net on him. Jeez, what a play to get out of bounds. 
Chandler, they say he's even better after he gets the ball. They're taking a look at Winslow right now. Yeah, look at that. They're looking. Gonna go. I, I'd sure like to have him in there when I need a touchdown to keep my season alive. Caught 10 today. That's right. We mentioned how he got hurt. We'll see another picture of it. He's just trying to help out Joyner. Makes a good block, but hurt his shoulder. What a great look at it on the replay. Muncy runs. They stuff him hard at the 40. The game clock is running. 3.43 left to play. Miami Dolphins 38. San Diego Chargers 31. And the clock continues to tick. And right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WSMV Nashville. We have not seen Eric Sievers catch any balls today. We're just right. about to. Eric Sievers comes in now as the tight end set to the right. Third and two. You know they're going. They're taking two downs to get the first. takes a look. Joyner pulls it down. He takes a whack but holds on. It's a first down for the Chargers. And the silence is deafening here in the Orange Bowl with that catch as the Dolphins now see the Chargers get four new downs. And the hitting is definitely picking up. It is. <laughs> I know these fellas are bushed. When you've got, when you've got a ball game with as many points scored as this, as this one has produced, everyone's tired. The action level's been extremely high. The excitement level's high. Man, this is the season. It's been fabulous, and we're coming right down to the final gun of this one. 2.26 left to play. 38-31 Miami leads, but San Diego has the first down, and they have the right arm of Dan Fox putting it on load again. Completed to Charlie Joyner, and he's inside the 40-yard line of Miami. 16-yard gain. NBC Andy Williams and the Oak Ridge Boys join Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell sisters. Then sparks fly when Stella's uncle Buster explodes upon the scene in Harper Valley. Followed by Gabe Kaplan in Lewis and Clark and Rona Barrett in television inside and out all tonight on NBC. Local news and then Saturday Night Live. Those will follow the football game except in the West Coast and Mountain Zone. Right now, the Chargers on first down get some good yards with Muncie taking it up the middle. And the game clock is ticking down to the two-minute warning. Great offensive play, though, John, by both sides. This is considered to be one of the top defenses in the, in the game. Now we get word from the sideline, John. All Winslow really needed was the shoulder pad fixed. He's back in. Is that why it was dipping the way it was? I got to feel it hurt a little bit. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl right after this. With John Brody, this is Don Crickey back at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. AFC Divisional Playoff football has been spectacular today as the Miami Dolphins down 24 to nothing in the first quarter. Rallied back, trailed at the half on a spectacular play, a lateral play that ended up in the end zone for a touchdown. They were down by only seven at the half. Then they tied the game. Then they fell behind. Then Miami tied the game, and now they've gone ahead. But San Diego's moving here with two minutes to play. Looks, tip ball, and Keller Winslow was open to get it. Except I think Bo Camper got his hand on it. He did tip it. They love to play him in passing situations. He started today, remember, only his second start of the season. He's played very well. But that's the biggest play he's made all day. Kellen Winslow trying to get open. Has no problem doing that. Getting him the ball is another back. Kellen Winslow, who's already caught 10 today to tie John Stallworth for the record in an AFC playoff game. Third down and five for San Diego. Again, it's to Winslow. It's a first down for the Chargers. The emotional level of this stadium has gone up and down like a rocket today. It's such a tough job for Mike Kozlowski to handle Winslow once he gets in on, in a position where he's like rebounding. All right, he's such a big target. 
That's about all Kozlowski can do. He's trying to cover him all over the field. I don't think any man can do it. The president and owner of Miami's Dolphins, Joe Robbie on the sidelines. 118 to play. Clock's running. San Diego with first down, but trailing by seven. Here's the throw. Wes Chandler has the ball inside the 10 yard line. What a catch. Lyle Blackwood and Fulton Walker combine on the stop. How many athletes can go up, put their attention on getting the ball in the middle of a crowd? He cuts underneath Fulton Walker, catches the ball, and actually protects himself with his shoulder pads against Blackwood. That's a great reception. Puts him in a position to get a tie. The 69 points scored in this playoff game, John, are a playoff record. I'd also like to make sure I didn't give Miami too much time to get the ball back if I do score. We could be heading to OT. Dan Fouts boxes out. He's going to run. Now he throws. There's a man open. James Brooks touchdown San Diego with 59 seconds to play. Are you kidding me? I don't know. It's going to stand. No markers down. There won't be any markers. He finally, you know where he got a little lucky is he had two people in the area of the reception. Bouts almost let the ball go here. As he comes out, he's got Winslow trying to make the catch. Thinks the ball's intended for him. Brooks is playing back up, runs right underneath him, picks it off. Back to within one. This can tie it up. The fumble at the other end of the field when Miami was positioning the ball for what would have been a lockup field goal. Now turns the other way, and the Chargers take it down the field, and if Finerska hits this, the game is tied with 58 seconds to go. Sports fans, we are tied up at 38 all. Let's not talk about overtime, though, Crick, <laughs> because this baby still got 58 seconds. That's right. You probably have two <laughs> touchdowns in 58 seconds. Where this is gone. Form chart holds up. We'll be back for the final minute of regulation, maybe more, when we come back to the Orange Bowl after this. History. It is already in the books as the highest scoring playoff game ever, the 76 points. There's a mistake. San Diego kicks off out of bounds, so they'll have to kick off again from their 30. Here's one that was that was busted just before the end of the half. You remember when Bernishka really had to go at it from 55 yards out? Little body English, it missed by a foot. As you look back at it, it looks like a big play. But you know, because of the condition of the game, the way it was played, all the scores that have taken place, I don't think you can look at a play two quarters back and figure it's an indicator. So let's take a look at one that we know is. Here is Kellen Winslow and Brooks. Winslow don't get it. Brooks will. Brooks must have waved him off. Said, big guy, I got this one. Well, I'll tell you what. Winslow is bewildered. He's not believing that there was anyone behind him. And when you're going after a ball, the really outstanding receivers run blind after it. He's thinking, I know I can't get. Oh, my goodness. He's got to be the most surprised man in the house to see that. Brooks comes up to about his letters. Now they knock it down the field on the hop. Miami picks it at the 30. 35, and Eddie Hill takes it to the 40-yard line. 52 seconds left. Woo-wee. That's a lot of time for an offense. You mentioned that this might be the best playoff game you've ever seen. Miami has a penchant for being in pretty good ones. The last playoff game they played in was against San, uh, Kansas City in 1971. You remember that, baby? Went for a while, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Christmas Day at 71, Miami beating Kansas City 27 to 24. There's been five overtime games in postseason play. Everybody's at the line. Stock has time. He throws and oh. oh. San Diego very nearly intercepts. Glenn Edwards comes up on the ball at the 44-yard line. The first overtime playoff game, Yankee Stadium in New York, December 28, 1958. Well, you can bet right now that Shula's trying to get some three more points on the board. He's got Strzok throwing the ball, a little overthrown to Joe Rose. Pine almost picked it up. There's Uva Van Schaman. Looking up at the clock, it shows 46 seconds to go. Baltimore beat the Giants in that first playoff game. Dallas beat Houston in the playoff game in the Old American Football League in 62. Nine men on the front, Don. They don't want to give any open receiver. 
Rock knocks his arm, looks at the intercepted, and dropped. Is it that was ball? caught. That's that got to be caught. a completion. Yep, it is. It's a first down. It is a first down for Miami, an interception and a lost ball. Fumble. Well, let's take a look. Remember the rules. If you have the ball in your grasp, when it comes down, you've still got it. Even if it gets out, gets jarred, gets jarred away. Willie Buchanan makes a great interception. That's one of the problems with the rule. When you hit the ground, if that ball falls away, it still counts. It's interesting, John, the San Diego kickoff after the tying touchdown was a squib kick. They bounced it down the field. Miami got it with an up back and started out in good field position with a minute to go. Yeah, well, the first ball, when it was kicked out of bounds, they were really concerned about a long kickoff return. I don't know. They've been pretty good on kickoff on kickoff coverage. Uh, it's easy to second guess. I won't try to do that. I know right now that Miami has to make about 12 to 13 more yards to get within Von Shaman's range. That means anything inside the 40. I think he can get up to 55. There is a win behind the, the Dolphins. Right. It has to win. be taken into consideration. Kind of a gusting, swirling wind, though. How about those stats? Seven touchdown passes. 660 some odd yards and rather amazing John the fact that they between them put the ball up 76 times and only two have been intercepted that's right you think Von Schaumann isn't uh, a little pensive he does well in pressure situations Uwe Von Schaumann He's hoping to get the chance. 34 seconds to go. Another big one coming up tomorrow at NBC. Buffalo at Cincinnati. Free game at 12. Here's a pass downfield. And the Dolphins are in range. 26 seconds. We saw Von Schaumann in meditation, which uh, everyone that follows Miami knows he goes through in critical situations. Now it's time to get in and do the kicking. I don't know whether Shula will try and get a little bit farther down the field or send Von Schaumann in now, but... Uh, a penalty would make it an, an awfully long field goal try. Now he's got it within a 47-yard range with the win. So it's first and 10 now down to the 31-yard line. What a perfect throw. This is just capping off one of the greatest performances I've ever seen. Well, Ed, you could be with us today on NBC starting out 82 with those three bowl games yesterday. A national champion crowned here last night when the Clemson Tigers completed their perfect season. And now the Miami Dolphins who've not won a playoff game since 1974 looking to put it up with a field goal if they get in range. So delighted you can be with us and there's more tomorrow when Buffalo plays at Cincinnati. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Olmeyer. Football coordinating producer Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game has been produced by George Finkel and directed by John Gonzalez. And we thank them all in our excellent NBC technical team that's put the pictures on the screen as the Miami Dolphins lost a fumble down here not that long ago and the Chargers went the other way to tie the game. Look at those 76 points. And except for the first quarter they were all earned. You know early in the first quarter there were some gimmies but since then both offenses have been running up and down the field. First down, 23 seconds to play in a tie game. Vigorino right up the middle. He's down to the 26. 17 seconds left. They're going to let it run down, I think. He's got it right in the middle, right where they want it. So now those place kickers who all the jokes are made about get set to come out. Yeah, it's time to stand up and get counted. He's done it about as well as anyone ever has in this game. this brief moment our thanks to our NBC statistician Steve Dans to Harry Von Susco Mike Horvath in the booth four seconds left to go as Von Schaumann comes out once when he was a collegiate at Oklahoma Oklahoma was then playing at Ohio State when Ohio State was the number one team in the country with time almost out he went out on the field the Buckeyes called a couple of timeouts and everybody at Ohio Stadium was chanting block that kick and he just stood in the middle of the field and waved and directed the crowd then went out and wrapped one for about 47 yards that won the game. So he can't handle the heat. He's done that here in Miami. 
He sent a very popular Dolphin to the sidelines, or at least away from the Dolphins, when Gero Yepremian, the boot and Cypriot, went to tie-making. He made a few stops between then and retirement. Now Von Sharman with the hole by Donstrock at the 33-yard line. It'll be a 43-yard attempt straight away. A wind at his back. Kuchenberg snaps, and that's almost as big as the kick itself. Block, oh. no good. We go to overtime. Overtime in Miami. And Omo shifts again. Sometimes you don't get two chances. We, we remember Danello made good on his second effort. A lot of times you don't get that second one. Take a look. The center was... The snap was just a little high. Other than that, there was no problem. Von Schaumann didn't really hit it well. I don't think it was blocked at all. I really think that he just didn't hit the ball very well. It came out of there. Kind of a sputter ball. Bad time to have one if you're from Miami. And new life for San Diego. Rose, you and I are going to have to get a room here at the Orange Bowl. We're spending a lot of time here. That's all right. It's I'll tell great. you, if anybody wants to see two better football games than we've seen in the last two days, uh, I'd like to know where they're located. And it is indeed not over yet. Now, of course, the overtime, they go to a 15-minute max in the first overtime period. The first score ends it. Each team in the playoffs gets three timeouts in overtime. In the regular season, they get two. And, of course, in the regular season in overtime, if they play the first 15 minutes and there's no score, it goes in the books as a tie. And that happened here in Miami when the Jets and Miami Dolphins play to a regular season tie. But tonight we'll play it until somebody wins it. And one of the biggest one of the biggest coin cost uh, coin tosses in the history of uh, these two groups is uh, about to be made because if you take a look and say okay 76 points have been scored I'd like to have the ball. Well you in could pull an Abner Haynes playoff game many years ago Abner Haynes his team won the toss. San Diego won it. Abner elected to kick off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they won anyway. Yeah. So we're going to go to overtime when we come back to the Orange Bowl in Miami. What a game. The score here at the Orange Bowl, 38 San Diego, 38 Miami. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. We've just been informed it was this man who's done so much offensively for San Diego all day long, who got his hand on a game-winning field goal, forced it into overtime, did a little for the defense that time. And the flip of the coin works San Diego's way also as they'll get the kickoff to open overtime. James Brooks fields it at his four. And superior special teams play. Steve Schul comes down and makes the hit inside the 15-yard line of the Chargers. And this is the reason we're here. Fouts. Eight yards to go for a touchdown. Tries to put the ball to Winslow. Brooks running under it. Pulls it to within one. Bernishka, extra point, 38-38. But it's getting tougher right now. They've got a long way to move it. It was in 1977 we had the last playoff overtime game. Oakland beat Baltimore 37-31 in December of 77. Fouts on first down. Takes a look. Swings it out. Once he can't get near it. One of the few times that you'll ever see miscommunication between Fouts and one of his backs in a simple little route. That time once he stopped, Fouts thought, thought he was going to continue on, tried to hit him on the dead run. I think conditions get to everybody. But Dan Fouts less than anybody I've seen. Yeah, this game will get to some people. Whew. Got to me. Well, the Van Shaman had one chance. He's hoping for another. Second and ten, San Diego. We're in overtime. It's tied 38 all. <laughs> Kellen Winslow gets another one and gets ahead. Looks like he has a first down oh. for the Chargers. What a play. I'll tell you, when you're a target as big as Winslow, and if you saw the play from its inception, while Faust was out there scrambling for his life, he was out by the sideline jumping up and down. Now, at six foot six, a quarterback might find you sometime. There he is, giving Faust a target, picks him up, big first down, gets out of trouble. 
Ellen Winslow gives you a whole lot to look at as the target. And now he's caught 12 passes. He has just continued to break his own AFC playoff record. Here comes Muncy running hard to the outside. Knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Short gain on the plate. 30 seconds gone by now in overtime. Good defensive play by Betters to string the play out. Keep Muncy from turning the corner. Doug Betters, defensive left end. He missed Miami's last game with an infection in his back. Back and ready to go. Baumhauer, the big middle guard. Jim Camper starting at right end for Denherter, although Denherter's been in there to rush the passer. Larry Gordon, A.J. Dewey. Ernest Brown backing the line. Here is Faust taking a look. They almost get to him, and they separate the ball from Kellen Winslow. We've got a penalty down here, too, Donnie. At the line of scrimmage. At the line of scrimmage. A.J. Dewey's waving a finger at San Diego. False start. I'm not sure I wouldn't decline that one. Give him one, one down instead of uh, instead of two more. You know he's throwing the ball. Eighth penalty of this game against San Diego. The Dolphins are considering that. Now they step it off. Back to the 27-yard line. Ball start, number 66. Kellen's hurt again. It's been a long day in very humid weather. They have no choice in a false start. They have to take the five yards. So now second down and 12. Bounce stands in. Throws and makes the connection. It's a first down. Charlie Joyner coming off the left flank. Turns up over the middle. And the Chargers are out to their 42-yard line with a 14-yard gain. Well, I'll tell you, you you can go to just about any one of their receivers in critical situations. You keep saying, hey, here's a big third down play. Chandler's made them. Joyner's made them. Winslow's made them. Muncie's picked them up on the ground. And Fouts has been unerring. Thrown about three bad balls all day long. That's only not many when you're throwing 40. Well, they're up in the 80s, the two quarterbacks together, and there's been only two interceptions. One each way. First and 10 now, San Diego in overtime. Muncie takes it up the middle. He keeps on trucking and gets all the way to the Miami 45-yard line. Oh, boy. Offensive line is grinding now. They know one drive is all we need. Miami has led once in this game after trailing 24 to nothing. That's when they went ahead 38-31. Good offensive line, sir. You can see that Doug Wilkerson couldn't even find anybody to block. When you throw the way the Chargers throw, once in a while that'll happen. This game keeps on going, so we have a winner. We play two minutes in overtime now. Fouts throws and a free ball. It was off the hands of tight end Eric Seavers. Larry Gordon was the closest to it when it came down. Now we've got the other man in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> trying to loosen up. But they're not in field goal position yet. Seavers makes a pretty good move on Kozlowski, who's in, in in replacement of Winslow. You notice it hasn't changed any of the defensive thoughts as far as Miami's concerned. Just take his replacement, man for man. today of quarterback Dan Fouts of San Diego. He doesn't get many. And now we're two and a half minutes into overtime. And third and 20 coming up for San Diego. Fouts stands in. Finally throws it. Here comes Kellen Winslow. 
He got the first down. He may have. Kellen Winslow gets the first down. The third and 20, and San Diego delivers. I'm telling you, they played it off. They played it soft. Anything just to keep. That's just fatigue, folks. He has played every play as hard as he could. His shoulder is hurting him. They might have had a shoulder pad change, but he'd like to have a, a brand new right arm at the moment. He just sucked it up. He knows where he has to get. Made an excellent play to get underneath the crowd. Kozlowski's got a hold of him again, but not before he picks up the first. And that was as big a play as any. They all become so big right now. Yellen Winslow with a Hall of Fame day. 12 receptions today, but now he's down and out of the game. Eric Sievers is back in. As on third and 20, Fouts and Winslow connect again. They need about, uh, really, they need about seven yards for Bernischka to have a good shot at a field goal right now because the wind is against them. Well, they have four new downs to try to get those yards and we come back. And it would be a 40-yard attempt from here. No one fouts his history, though. He's gone for touchdowns in similar situations on four different occasions, so I don't, I guess, I don't guess he'll change his viewpoint. James Brooks working his way all the way down to the nine-yard line. Now what does Coach Coriel do? Boy, I'll tell you what, they just get after it and don't stop till the gun sounds. Here we go, James Brooks with a big play of the offensive line. Rejuvenated with a chance to get back in the ball game. 82 passes thrown today, but I don't think you'll see any more. <laughs> Overtime is now almost five minutes old. As Don Shula can only hope now. Now they're going to take it right up the middle again. Here is Chuck Muncie down to about the eight yard line. It will be a 25 yard field goal from here when you consider the seven yard deep hold and the extra 10 into the end zone. And here comes the field goal unit. Ralph Pinerska. Ralph Pinerska comes out. You remember his counterpart, Uva Von Schumann, not that long ago, appeared to have what would be the game winner for Miami. Set to go as regulation flat time closed out, but his was tipped. The last big situation he got in, he was successful against Tampa Bay in the last few seconds of the ball game. He's a very good clutch player. We all find out together right now. It's no oh. good. It's wide to the left. It is no good. We keep on playing. of overtime 908 on the first overtime period remaining second down and 10 lost in a long one Ariel Harris on the fly down the far sidelines and struck with that long distance delivery is a bit long so third down and 10 comes up, and if the Dolphins don't convert here and have to punt, San Diego could get good field position again. 
NFL 81 begins at 12.30 tomorrow from Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati, Ohio, as the Bengals, with the best record in the AFC this year, host the Buffalo Bills in another AFC divisional playoff game here on NBC. Throughout the year, Don, this has been the most damaging situation for the Chargers throughout the season because when they're in third and 10, third and 12, third and 15, that's when they've been burned. That's when they've played it a little too deep. That's when people have hit in front of them and behind them. Well, it's third and 10 right now for Miami. Rock takes a look. He's going real long. Nobody near it. Nobody near it. Here comes the putter, Tom he, Morris. He, wa he wanted to go to Hardy. He couldn't do it. Hardy pulled up. He thought he was going right down the field. He tried to throw it over the whole the whole show. Had he read Hardy, had a little more time to throw, he'd have had a big play. This is Don Cricky with John Brody at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. The Miami Dolphins and the San Diego Chargers tied up 38 all. We are in overtime, the sixth playoff overtime game in NFL history. George Roberts standing at his, uh, Tom Horace standing at his five yard line, hits it from the 10 and hits it well. James Brooks is forced into a fair catch at his 37. So Fouts in the Charger offense comes out again, trying to get in field goal range after a 43 yard punt. You know what's, uh, what's the best indication of a viewpoint I've ever seen is today, both these teams have had at least three chances where it looked like it was a certain victory for them at a, at a given time and people say why don't you do this and why don't you do that because there's no certainty in this game you just have to keep playing it and I bet if uh, San Diego gets another chance they're going to have a go at it until it's fourth down maybe Fouts is right the coaches and the kickers no smiles right now for Ralph Finerska but he might get another shot pitch back Muncie runs well and runs out to the 46 yard line Rule him out at the 45 where he stepped out, but he gained eight on that first down carry, so it's second down and two. You know, we mentioned in the third quarter that uh, San Diego might be getting a little tired. I think both sides are equally tired right now. I would think so. 8.40 left in the first overtime period. Tonight on NBC, Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell sisters, Harper Valley, Lewis and Park. Local news after television inside and out and Saturday Night Live. Right now, the pitch back goes again to Muncie. And Miami has the ball. Miami has the ball. the ball and so now Miami has it in overtime first down at 10 and here comes Tony Nathan turning the corner starting to the outside Nathan dies to the 44 yard line there Oof. goes Uva into his routine again you might want to change routines Doug Betters has gone the distance on defense for Miami and he just came up with that last free football those turnovers if uh Actually, they started they started Miami on a comeback. They've given them a last ditch chance. Last ditch. What am I talking about? There may be four or five before we're through. This is really it's amazing how this has gone. The equilibrium of the game swinging. Motion level just going up and down in this orange ball. And here's a pass in the flat. Came in on the one hop. Nope. Bruce Hardy, who's got some big balls today for Miami, gets it on the one half, so it comes back. And Louis Kelcher, who's made some big plays, forced Rock to throw it low, hit him just as he was getting rid of the ball. Couldn't get enough on it. Mike Adamley and Bryant Gumble down there. <laughs> what do you think of this one? 
7.42 left to go now in this first overtime period. We keep on playing. We could go for who knows how long. We are in the playoffs. We are in overtime, and Miami has the ball third down and eight at the 45-yard line of San Diego. Rock throws Hunter just before he was hit. Comes in a little low for Nat Moore. Boy, oh, Nat made a, a fine effort to get that ball. It's all out for everybody on every play right now because any effort could win the ball game for your club. Just couldn't quite get to it. Another one bouncer. San Diego's defense has been up to the task in the last couple of they series. Have. They've been putting a good rush. That time they forced Strzok to release the ball. He was hit hard and now. Tom Morris is back out to punt for the Dolphins. He'll try to pin the Chargers back deep in their own end. Angling toward the near sideline. He hits the ball well. Into the end zone, out to the 20. And San Diego starts out first and 10 after a 45-yard punt into the end zone. 7.29 left to go in the first overtime period. San Diego and Miami at 38 all in a most amazing game. If you join us late, Don Coriel saw his San Diego Chargers jump off to an astounding 24 to nothing first quarter lead over Miami. The Dolphins appeared gone. But by halftime, they'd rallied back and trailed only 24-17. Then they rallied back and tied the game. Then San Diego went ahead 31-24. Then Miami came back and tied it, 31-all. Then the Dolphins took the lead for the first time, 38-31. After a Miami fumble, San Diego tied it to send it to overtime. James Brooks can't hold it. Dolphins closing in on the ball. Just ruled a forward <laughs> pass. Well, I'll tell you what, that's just alert play by Bo Camper. You never know. I've seen plays where it looked right. like it was a forward pass. The ball was laying on the ground. Nobody claimed it. Finally, the, the official blew the, blew the whistle. So uh, make sure the whistle stops your play. Nothing else. Those people weren't on the edge of their seats at the outset when San Diego blew away the Dolphins early in the game, including a 54-yard punt return by West Chandler for a touchdown. But they are now. Most of them are standing at the orange ball. Mount stands in. Second and ten. He throws. Eric Sievers can't hold on. It's third down and ten. Boy, Koslowski almost came up with a big interception. Very good coverage to Sievers. Mounts had to really thread it. Didn't have anybody open. Another third downer. Dan Fouts, who's pumped that right arm today. Record numbers for a playoff game. 29 of 49 for 359 yards. Oh. Kevin Winslow not that long ago, and he went out. Right back in there now. Third down and 10. Third and 10. Here's the rush. Somehow he gets away. Not for long. Yes, he does. He's going to run. He might get a first down. He's short. I'll tell you, that was for a man that can't move around. That was about as fine a movement as you'll ever see getting out of a real trap. Comes up about a yard and a half short of the first down. He had more moves than step and fetch it here. Look at him. Well, his offensive lineman kept contact with the defense. But Faust just made great movement. Every time he made a move, it was in the right direction. Finally got out. Had no receivers open. Tried to pick up the first down. Got a little help from Brooks. Good play by Walker. George Roberts will now punt it back to Miami. The ex-Dolphin standing inside his 15. Hits the ball not very deep. Vigarito fields it on the run. Turns the corner. Vigarito's across midfield, and he's down to the 45-yard line. Tommy Vigarito, the rookie from Virginia, returns a 31-yard punt, 13 yards. Donnie caught that ball on the dead run. I think three out of four punt returners would have let it bounce. He never even thought of that. <laughs> he took off. As soon as the ball was kicked, it was kicked short. He picked it up, got behind his wall, and puts him in great position again. Third time in a row, San Diego's defense has been up against it. 
haven't allowed a first down previous two. We've now played almost nine minutes of overtime. 6.15 left to go in the first overtime period. Miami working with a wind at the Dolphins' back. First and ten. Strock takes a look. He's got a problem. Gets it away. Man's open. The ball is caught at the 25-yard line. Jimmy Cephalo. If this ball had been intercepted, there wouldn't have been a man in the house that would have defended Strock. They just said, why try to make a great situation out of a bad one? However, games are also won that way. I can remember Staver doing it on his way down when Oakland beat Miami a while back. Strock makes a great throw, fine reception, and certain field goal range. Second back throw is Tony Nathan. He rushes the ball down to the 20. I wonder, John, if they might not try to work it right out into the end zone. Well, the way the ball game's been going, I'm sure it has an effect on other people's thoughts. Uh, and primarily Shula. Two missed field goals. One was tipped the last time. Miami might just try to power the ball all the way down and into the end zone. Don Strzok has thrown 42 times, completed 28 for 397 yards. And uh, Shula and his staff's credit, they've kept Andre Franklin in the game. He was the up back blocking on the last play. He's still in there. The young man who fumbled earlier. And the ball went the other way and ended up in the Miami end zone on the drive. And here is Tony Nathan. Down to the 17-yard line. Third down coming up, third and about two. Uva Von Schaumann checking things out. If he's meditating or in a trance or just waiting for the finger to point and hear the kicking team call. What he's doing now is almost immaterial. What he's going to have to do in about 30 seconds. Uh... Time's no factor. Nope. We're in overtime and they keep on playing. That's the time in the first overtime period. Three tight ends. Louis Kelcher makes the tackle. Short of the first down. And here comes the Dolphins field goal unit once again. Just it's the, it's the big people that make the big plays at the critical times. Louis Kelcher on just great penetration stops the ball short of a first down to keep him with uh, some chance anyway. That was Andre Franklin they gave the ball to on that play. And so with the ball spotted now at the 17 yard line, we're gonna have about a 34 yard field goal attempt straight away when we come back. Back at the Orange Bowl. 342 remains now in the first overtime period and again we have a chance for a game ender Uva von Schumann you recall his last field goal attempt was tipped by Kellen Winslow now he's trying it's going to be a 35 yard attempt from the 25 snap set down all good and block we keep playing folks it's blocked again and the Chargers come up with the ball at their 16 yard line <laughs> Coach Coriel, he's probably numb. Well, I don't know how you can, you know, you've got a game locked up about four times each way. I guess there may be a, a reconsideration. I think Winslow blocked that one, too. He's not getting up right now, John. Oh, he's just left everything out there. Let's take a look at the kicker. The ball is spotted properly. It never really gets up in the air. I think Von Schaumann hit the dirt before he hit the ball, slid through it. Not the way to lift it. Here's a man that's left it all out there today. Guys have run themselves into butter. Kellen Winslow playing one of the great games of his brief but great career at San Diego. He's up. He's played a lot of great ones too. He's ready to go right back in to take him out for at least a play. So we've now gone 11 and a half minutes into overtime. We get the message, Don, that uh, Leroy Jones blocked it. Uh, Whoever did it, I don't think it would have gone in anyway. I think somebody's belt buckle could have blocked that when it took off pretty low. Yeah. 
So the ball is just across the 15-yard line, and the San Diego Chargers start out again in an overtime game. Dan Fouts brings the offense back out. He wants to get it downfield, obviously, to get in field goal range and try to end it again. If I'm not can. sure he'd settle for that, pal. That doesn't seem to be the clue or the key. Once that ball goes up in the air, though, it's a lot of guys looking after it. There's been only one interception each way in this game. Fouts has thrown 49 times, has given up only one interception. And Don Strzok has thrown 42 times, and he has only had one intercepted. The odds are if they keep pitching, they're going to have another pickoff. They've got to get it down the field, and Dan Fouts, who broke records this year, 340 completions, an NFL record, 4,800 yards, a record, 33 touchdown passes coming into today. More look, see if we can pinpoint who it was that blocked it. Number 68 is Leroy Jones. He's one of that mass in the middle. Never got to Winslow. He went to the moon to get it. Somebody got it up front. Well, Leroy Jones is 6'8". They say it was Leroy. I'll go for that. We'll go with that. Ron Shaman hoping there'll be a next one. The last double overtime in the playoffs was in December 24th, 1977, when Oakland beat Baltimore 37 to 31. Fouts throws downfield, and West Chandler turns out and makes the reception across the 30-yard line. Out to the 31. So San Diego with need of a lot of yards to get in field goal range. Moves on with four new downs. We played over 12 minutes of overtime here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Don Cricky with John Brody in this AFC Divisional Playoff game. There is more tomorrow on NBC as the Buffalo Bills take on the Bengals at Cincinnati. NFL 81 begins with the pregame show at 12.30. Here's a throw. Seavers goes for the ball but can't get to it. I tell you, but Blackwood could. Yep. Mm. Almost there. Second down and 10 for San Diego. Every play is so critical. Everyone absolutely spent on that playing field. We see John Capaletti and Jim Brooks in the backfield. Muncie has not returned to the action. Glenn Edwards. Chuck Muncie, who lost the fumble that seemingly set Miami in position to win it with a field goal. It's slow getting up after the hit. He's not come back, and now Bouts takes a look, throws hard. West Chandler goes up in the air, and it looks like he came down with the ball. He did at midfield. Oh, West Chandler goes up, catches it, is hammered, and goes down and holds the ball an 18-yard gain and a Charger first down as they come out quickly to attend to West Chandler. It appears as though the wind got knocked out. I know he got the ball stuck right in his stomach. 2.25 remaining in the first overtime period. We'll be back. I have a headache. And I, and I feel lousy. I would like you to give me an aspirin. At Wendy's. At Wendy's, your hamburger comes to you hot off the grill. You can see it with your own eyes coming right off the grill. Look, you want heat lamps? Go to a health club. You want a hot and juicy hamburger? Go to Wendy's. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> well, I want to shake your hand. Congratulations. Wendy's. Wendy's. Ain't no. Ain't no. A reason to go anyplace else. Sorry about last night. I really was sick. You don't sound sick. Oh, sick as a dog. Stuffy, aches, fever, coughs, uh, like flu. You don't sound sick. Well, I, I, I took some of this new stuff. Contact severe cold formula. You don't uh, sound. Get Fifty percent more medicine than Comprex for uh, aches, fever, even coughing. Mm -hmm. uh, how about next week? When you really are sick, get contact severe cold formula. It's new and it works. Maybe it works too well. In a game of standout plays, Wes Chandler certainly made one a moment ago for San Diego, going up in the air, catches this 18-yard pass, takes a tremendous hit, goes down and holds down. It's a first down for the Chargers in overtime. We've played 13 minutes of overtime football. 
38 38 the numbers Fouts takes a look dancing looking to get away long throw downfield Charlie Joyner has the ball he's not done yet inside the 10 he's down to the stand to knock knock down at the 10 yard line as he cut back and back outside the 10 and now the Chargers have a point blank field goal attempt coming up if they so select a 40 yard gain on that play now Charlie Joyner's down Hey, if there are any questions on anybody's mind about how the offensive line is protecting for Dan Fouts when you know they're tired, both sides are tired, they're holding people off, giving Fouts enough chance to get down to his secondary, to his receivers in the secondary. About 430 some odd yards for the day for Dan. And John, there's been virtually no holding calls on either offensive line. No, there haven't. That's about. I don't think they're going to elect to uh, go for a field goal right here. But I think I'm wrong. They're certainly going to think about it. <laughs> no, they, they just sent Rolf in the ball oh, game. So All let's right. have another whack at it. Well, the line of scrimmage is the 11. The 28-yarder. This one might do it. But we've thought that before, haven't we? Yes, sir. A little wind in his face. Going from... His right to the left. Ed Luther holds. It is up, and the game is over. The San Diego Chargers win with almost 14 minutes of overtime played. A 29-yard field goal by Rolf Benerska. And the Chargers move on to the AFC Championship game. I tell you, Don, I don't know what you can say. It, it, was, it was seen. You have... Three field goals that were missed that nine out of ten times both those kickers would make. Finally, the offense ran up and down the field long enough to get a final field goal attempt and make it. Dan Fouts, I think, played one of the most courageous ball games I've ever seen a quarterback play. His whole offense is lauded. They played against a great Miami defense. He gave Bernishka a chance to get back in, in good in good stead with his teammates, and they go on to the championship game. The San Diego Chargers go to the championship games. What a great ending here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. We'll be back.